Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Tom Wesner. I'm the faculty director of the Catalyst program. And it's uh, great to welcome all of you and see so much interest in the Catalyst program. This is our eighth year. We're approaching our eighth year in Catalyst and we have uh, Catalyst alumni on with us and my um, excellent colleague, Ali Galati, who helps me manage a lot of the details involved in the program um, and, and our Catalyst TA um, for the third year now is Kyleen Ingram, who's on, and Chris Whelan is a graduate of the program, um, as is Kudze and Talene, who are in tonight, and students are going to provide their input and perspective and answer your questions, so please feel free to chat questions in as we go, and um, I have a PowerPoint, and I'm going to just kind of run through the slides efficiently. So I think we should be able to get uh, most of this complete by about 535. We don't want to belabor the points. You can also follow up with us at the Catalyst email address, which is catalyst at bc.edu. Uh, or you could always check in with the students that you have that we have on tonight that'll be answering your questions. They're Catalyst ambassadors and um, or or with um, Ali Galati, who's on as a co-host with me. So, so welcome everybody. This is our 10th, sorry, our eighth year in the summer ahead. And uh, I can say, cause I've been with the program since the beginning, the very beginning, it's really evolved. And we have almost 450 students who have successfully matriculated through the program. Most of them are Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences students. Some, uh, we have a couple of uh, Connell School of Nursing students who are alums. And we have um, more than a handful, maybe about 20 to 25 students who were enrolled in the Lynch School of Education and Human Development. We also have um, alumni of our program from other colleges and universities. And so we know we have interest this year from students that are non-BC students as well. So who, whoever's on, welcome. I can say to everybody that the program has really um, surpassed our own expectations we know that liberal arts students who might be English, uh, communications, economics, history, right? Art history, African diaspora studies majors, and right down the line, philosophy. We know that um, when we have to choose a major for college, sometimes we don't know what we don't know, right? And we have to kind of check off a box and we wind up in a major and we might switch it during college and we might struggle with our vocation and that process of the discernment that we go through at Boston College um, and that those, those processes can lead us to think about what might be possible um, beyond or in addition to our major. And the world of business uh, is, is a world rich with opportunity and the language of business is really what we focus on in the, in the eight week program you might have with us. And our alumni here tonight can speak to that. Um, but it's really been a game changing program for virtually every student that's taken the program. Uh, each year, I think we've tweaked it a little bit and, and made it better and refined it and made it really efficient. So I'll walk you through the key points tonight um, and I'll, I'll ask our alumni to jump in as much as possible. So again, please chat, enter questions. Allie will manage that and um, let me know if she wants me to illuminate on uh, any of those points that she's making in her answers. Um, so the first thing, um, you know, here, here's the order of the agenda, and I don't really want to uh, be too prescriptive and, and read this, but I'll talk about these things that you can see on your screen um, in the order that you see. And my computer's freezing up. Allie, can you um, control this PowerPoint? Or? Allie, can you hear me? If the um, space bar or the yeah. arrows aren't working, try clicking. Yeah, my, my, go to the next one. Hold on, my computer froze up. I can request remote control and then I'll have control of it if you'd like. Wanna do that? Do we wanna make Chris a... Yeah, that'd be great. Oh, there we go. Chris, do you have it? 
just sent you the request. There you go. Next one. There you go. Thanks, Chris. So, so what is the Catalyst program? And this is uh, just off the press, the slide. Um, what is it? And what I, what I mean is we made a, a major change um, just this week. So the, man, the Carroll Schools Catalyst program is a, is a full-time 10 week, sorry, eight week, 10 credit program uh, for non-business majors. So none of the Carroll School of Management students are invited to apply to this. Um, today or just this week, we added one credit. So all the students that you hear from tonight uh, are students who received nine credits for successful completion of the program. And so we added a credit today for the mini courses that everybody will take. Um, and we think that's a real value uh, to everybody who's gonna be enrolled with us. The professors in the, in the program really are, they're the top, some of the very best teaching professors in the Carroll School of Management. These are uh, full-time faculty. They're not, um, they're, they're faculty that are very hard to get during course registration, even if you're in the Carroll School, um, even if you're a senior and you wanna take one of their classes. Uh, they're hard to get when you have a good pick time. To any of our students or alumni, I wanna just say something quickly about the professors. Yeah, um, I would just say that, I would just echo what Professor Westner already said. Um, the professors who are teaching are extremely, you know, educated and um, they're very knowledgeable about the topics that they're teaching. Um, and on top of that, they, ju they just do an excellent job of breaking down um, topics if you need extra help um, by just going to see them. And everyone was just extremely kind and very understanding throughout the program, especially coming in as an ANS student. You I didn't have very much knowledge on business and other things. And so it, it made it very helpful that the professors were willing to meet me where I was and give me step-by-step -step guidance as I went throughout the courses. That's very helpful. Kudze, thank you. Chris, ready? Okay, so here, okay. I think I think I just unfroze. I did. Great. But Chris, you can stand by. Good. My computer unfroze. Um, so how is the program structured? So, so it's eight weeks. Uh, we have a lot of um, days when we say here in the third bullet, four to five days per week. There are just right now in the, in the calendar that we have, that's just about final, uh, a couple of weeks where we have five day weeks. Uh, but we have Juneteenth this year. We have the July 4th weekend. We have Memorial Day. Um, and, and so there are some hard and fast days that we can't meet where BC's closed. But we um, want to give a lot of, a lot of uh, time off for students. I, I wouldn't really want to overstate that and say really too much, but a lot of four day weeks. It is summertime. Students are coming off of a semester, a full semester. Uh, we start the day after graduation and commencement is scheduled at BC, which is May 24th on Monday. We start the next day and um, it's, a, it's a demanding program while you're in, but we think it's reasonably paced. Um, we have uh, three full courses and we'll talk about those in a second. Um, here they are. Uh, financial accounting, with Professor Taylor. Uh, marketing principles, with Professor Kerbs. And uh, fundamentals of finance with Professor James or business law with, uh, with me. And so uh, students, uh, this, this finance or law split is always a question that comes up. So we like to ask, uh, address that early so students are clear about that. So um, students will take four or five uh, classes and the classes are about two hours and 15 minutes each. We'll take four, five, and possibly six. And then on the last class of those five or six, you'll have a midterm. Um, which is which is a midterm that comes quick, right? So normally you might have six or seven weeks, uh, six weeks in a semester. And one. Catalyst happens quick. The pace is much quicker because it's really almost a full semester of, of time in class in eight weeks rather than 15 weeks. And so after the midterm, uh, students will choose what they want to stick with for the rest of the semester. 
Um, but but either way, I mean, even with the split, everybody will gain an understanding of the basics of that discipline, right? So they'll have a working understanding. And the other courses, financial accounting, marketing, uh, are, are three three credit, I'm sorry, are full three credit classes that you can take. Would anyone want, of you want to address the split and uh, how that worked for you or your classmates? I could quickly talk about that. So um, for me, I took business law my sophomore year before I did Catalyst. And that's why I was actually um, influenced to, um, to apply to Catalyst because I had Professor Wesner. But um, some of my friends, obviously, they took both of these classes. And if they wanted to minor in the finance um, minor, they would they were more inclined with the finance minor. Or if they just wanted to continue and really were interested in business law, they would continue with that. But I would say that those four to five classes before you have to choose um, gives you enough time to really know like which one you're going to like and um, which one will work for you. Because finance is obviously more math-based and business law is more um, analytical skills and writing. So um, kind of choose like what is going to feed your strengths um, and what you like. And also um, if you want to do a minor in the business school and you want to do finance, um, a lot of people did that because of that. Yeah. Colleen, do you want to speak to that for a second? Um, yeah, I would also say just like come in with an open mind because like a lot of kids come into the program thinking that they want to do finance because like it has a nice ring to it or like maybe their parents want them to do finance, etc. Um, but like for me, like I'm a very mathy person. So like when I came into the program, I thought I was going to do finance. Um, but I realized like a couple classes into business law that I really liked business law and I kind of wanted to challenge myself and do something outside of my comfort zone, um, which would be like financy or like mathy and do something more like writing intensive or analytical in that sense. Um, so I say like, just keep an open mind and it's also the summer. So like, you're still gonna have like grades and everything but the stakes are a little lower, you know? So you have the chance to really explore um, other options. So you might as well take the opportunity while you can. Mm -hmm. Kylene, I really like your comment there and maybe Chris or Kudzi, you could join here. When you say the stakes are lower, I think you're really talking about the culture and the climate of Catalyst and how we've tried to build the summer program so that it's really kind of standalone specialized program um, that gives a lot of attention to students that we can't give during the year because we have too many students and too many classes, right? But would anyone like to speak to that, to the, to the culture, um, to, to access to CSOM professors and, and, and the freedom and space to learn about marketing, for example, even if you're not gonna do it in the future? Yeah, I can speak to that. I picked up on that phrase as well. Um, and I think it is very important that phrase, you know, the stakes are lower. Obviously, one of the, the great parts about the program is that um, whether you are doing a CSOM minor or not, if you are, then most of these classes, especially financial accounting, I know that's, that's the core that you jump from when you, when you start doing the minor and to be able to do that in an environment where Kylene said low stakes, it still counts as three credits and it gives you that huge jump on the minor. But at the same time, like professor Wesner just said, you have access and you have the opportunity to seek help guidance, even career advice from some of these professors that ordinarily would would maybe not even be in the picture just due to picking classes and, and so forth. So when the stakes are lower, I think Kylene's referring to a lot of the, the extra, extra stuff is moved away in registering for courses and who am I going to talk to? You're on campus, these are your professors and they're here to help. And that's what they're here for and, and you're here voluntarily as well. It's really helpful. Um, Kylene and Chris, both of you have something really unique um, in common, I think that grew out of the program. And, and that is that you're both pers pursuing an accounting um, minor and a master's in accounting, which will for both of you start next August. Um, do you, and, and I think that what we hear, Ali and I hear a lot of students come in who say, gee, I haven't taken a math class. I don't know if I can handle accounting or the seesaw thing that all my friends talk about. There's a little bit of an intimidation factor, right? And maybe this sense that I, I can't do it, but our professors, by the way, say that ANS students bring a bigger picture mindset um, and, and really broad thinking and real curiosity. And so they come for different reasons to this program. They really want exposure. But could you talk about how you were you were greeted 
in the program and how it altered your career trajectory without you ever even knowing uh, it was a possibility? Um, yeah, I can talk about it. So I came into the program, like I said, expecting to um, pursue finance, but also just like, like accounting. Um, and I ended up really liking accounting and I was encouraged to pursue um, a career in accounting. And I kind of just kept that in the back of my mind um, and registered for more classes, pursued a minor, et cetera. Um, but as I continued on in those classes, I realized that that's like really wanted what I wanted to do with my life. Um, and that was really helpful for me because the whole reason that I enrolled in Catalyst to begin with was because um, I came in as a math major here and I didn't really know what I wanted to do with that because I knew I liked math and I liked numbers, but I didn't really want to do research or teach or anything of that nature. Um, so I didn't yeah, really I like know my career path. Um, but Catalyst helped me figure it out. And also like to speak back to the professors and the low stakes um, topic that we were just talking about. Um, professor Taylor, who's the accounting professor here, kind of guided me like along the path of the minor and um, now the master's program and how to find an internship, which is kind of like overwhelming for students who aren't in CSOM because you kind of feel like you're on the outskirts sometimes. Um, but he helped with all of that. So that's kind of how like it worked for me, but the program kind of makes you feel like you're not different, I guess, just because you're an MCAS, like you're um, just another student at BC and like everyone's there to help you um, in whatever you want to do. Chris, did you want to touch on anything there? Yeah, the only thing I'd like to add to that, I think, is that I was a bit more of a dramatic case in doing a 180 from ANS to pursuing accounting. Uh, Kylene went into it knowing she was a numbers person. I was not the case um, with that. I, I actually, one of the main things that drew me to the program was the business law class. Um, and because I, I consider my strongest skills writing and reading. But I think just seeing where I am now um, in classes, I can walk into any classroom in Fulton, especially accounting. Um, I have Professor Taylor this semester actually, and it, it doesn't even pop into your mind that you're not in the Carroll School of Management because you're just given, you're put into an environment in Catalyst where number one, you get a great foundation of the actual knowledge. Um, he brings you to the numbers and I think he caters it to arts and sciences students. And number two, you spend nine, eight, nine weeks in Fulton every day so it, you're just naturally more comfortable. And I, I think that was actually a big factor in my decision to pursue um, potentially a career in, in something other than I'm in arts and sciences. That's really helpful. Um, okay, so I'll proceed along here in the PowerPoint. So those are the three, um, three credit courses, right? And that's how the option works. The other uh, aspect of the program that we have is um, the career practicum, we call it, right? Career the career module. And so this um, part of the course, these are mini courses. So you'll have probably five two hour and 15 minute classes in Microsoft Excel and uh, probably roughly about the same number in our career strategies course. And then you'll have, of course, either the business law or the fundamentals of finance component, uh, whichever one you opt out of, um, you will have had that exposure to those two disciplines. Um, in the career strategies class, I think maybe <laughs> I'll ask Kudze to speak to this because she took it remotely. And we found last summer, one of the benefits to, to pivoting to remote was that we learned it's easier to bring alumni back to campus through right, a remote venue. And um, we had, uh, every week we had uh, a panel that would talk about consulting or finance and then it would really, uh, that would introduce students to career possibilities um, and then networking as well. In person, you know, what we prefer to do is have a career night on campus where everyone dresses up and brings their resumes, but we're not sure if we're gonna be able to have the in-person class uh, just yet. We're waiting on a administrative decision on summer. Um, so we're gonna be announcing that to all the students who have applied and students who um, have submitted um, any material and our, our due date for the applications is March 9th. So we're hoping to 
get clarity on that and summer housing soon. But but the modules or the mini courses really add a lot of value. Um, Kudzi, you, you took it online and I know because I was on a bunch of them. You were at a bunch of them. Would you want to talk about your experience in the career strategies class? Yeah, for sure. So Jessica Hartley, I believe her name is, is the one who runs, who will in my year who ran it. And it was just amazing to get to um, go to the different panels because it was an opportunity in which we got to see where the degrees actually end up career-wise. So it was really interesting to see, okay, some people can do consulting or you can do investment banking or you know different types of things. So, um, and it really sparked an interest for me for consulting. Um, and like Professor Westner said, the excellent part of it well, I felt like one of the, you know, blessing in disguise of it being online was that we had access to people who were all over. It, it just so happens that one of the people from the um, panels was actually from Oregon, and I'm from Oregon, you know, and mm, I don't know if that would have happened if we were, you know, in Boston, but um, anyway, yeah, it was just really cool to see, you know, where your different degrees can take you career-wise, and then also to hear, oh, some people, you know, majored in English, or some people majored in like, you know, applied psych or something, but they still ended up in a business field or an HR field or, you know, different things. Um, and another thing that I will also just uh, highlight about Catalyst is that um, it really, I feel like looks excellent on your resume to say, okay, I am a student who's a arts and sciences, arts and sciences student. However, I have some knowledge about the business field. So, you know, it shows that you're multifaceted and your knowledge is very diverse. Um, and I actually got the opportunity to land myself uh, an asset management um, internship coming up this summer. And I definitely credit that to Catalyst being on my resume because they're thinking, okay, she's an ANS student. However, she does know stuff about, you know, business and finance and different things because of her involvement in Catalyst. So definitely, this is one of the biggest parts of the program. I felt like that knowledge about where can your career, where can your degree take you career-wise? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Really helpful, Kudz. And Kudz, there's a question coming in the chat that asks uh, uh, to you because you took it remotely. And, and you know, because you applied and we pivoted to, to remote. What was your experience like doing it remotely? Yeah, so that was, um, just reading the question, uh, Patrick's question. What was my daily schedule like? Um, I would say, you know, so we had classes, like I think we had two classes back to back and I, I believe, right? And then there's like a two hour break or something like that. Um, and then one more class or something like that. So the well, classes- Kudzi, let me, let me correct that just because I know it was sure. nine months ago and you have like this, yeah. pristine, you have a pristine memory, but I know it was like, <laughs> so we have an, in the East Coast, Eastern time, we have an AM yeah. class and then we have lunch usually for 45 minutes or so. And then we have a PM yeah. class on, on the yes. Eastern time block. Yeah. Um, and then, and then a couple days a week or one or one day a week, we might have some evening uh, presentation or career event or something, but go ahead, but go ahead. Yeah, so I would say that that 45 minute break, my apologies, I, yeah, nine months ago. <laughs> um, it, it definitely, you know, it's good. And like Westner uh, advised us when we first started that program, take advantage of that break, take a run, take a jog, go get lunch, go outside because it's a lot of time online. Um, but I felt like although there was a lot of class time, there was also plenty of time to relax and do other things. And maybe I'm biased because I was on the West Coast. So I was in class, what, like 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. or something like that. So then I had my whole day ahead of me to do whatever I needed to do. Um, so, yeah, that's what I would say about that. There's one more question uh, from Miriam. She said, would you say you still benefited from the program being remote? And I would say definitely yes. Um, again, that advantage of being on the West Coast. So I had that three hour, you know, earlier. So I had my whole day. Additionally, with the career, you know, panelists, getting access to people from all around. Um, and also you still get to connect with your peers through group me message. Like there was, you know, group chats that were created. And, um, you know, some of my closest friends, Mary Claire, like, um, and like Lawrence, he, two people who also participated, we're also pretty close now. So you can still connect with people, build relationships and different things like that. Great. Um, thank you. Okay, so here's the, uh, here are the way the credits work. Um, you get three for financial accounting, three for finance or business law. 
and three for marketing principles. Um, and the module is one credit, right? So the module, the one credit is gonna be a pass fail. Um, the, the focus is on right learning practical skills that you can use in a professional setting. Um, the three, of course, that, that, that are for credit do count and they factor into a student's GPA. Um, I think what Kudze mentioned a minute ago about the res your resumes popping, you know, everyone at the end of the program, and I've seen, you know, hundreds of resumes from Catalyst grads, they say Marcy College of Arts and Sciences, and then they say Carroll School of Management. And uh, that really grabs an employer's attention. A lot of recruiters love BC students, and they love arts and sciences students. Sometimes they maybe wish and a students had a little bit of business. And so that's why our dean built and designed this program to really be a bridge, uh, similar to the existing minors, but to really be a bridge for students to NS that, that might be thinking about a minor or that just want to learn the functional areas of business. Because if you go into, you know, nonprofit work, if you go into for-profit work, uh, any business that you work for has to make payroll. They have to account for their funds. They have to invest their funds somehow, right? They have to have a marketing team to build clients and build a customer base and make money. They have to deal with HR and contracts and legal issues. Everybody has to use Excel today, right? Um, and how you build your personal brand and how you interview and how you talk about yourself and your strengths. Those are things that you leave this program with after eight weeks. Um, so let's see, I am having trouble freezing again, Chris. There we go. Um, so I think I just uh, handled these. The last um, bullet here is that at the end of the program, everyone receives who successfully completes, receives a certificate of completion. Um, and then uh, it'll appear, the courses will appear on your transcript as well. Um, the cost for the program um, is 13,150. And uh, this should say, this should say 10 transferable credits. Um, and this cost covers books, materials, and program events. I, I wanna speak to the issue, um, the second bullet again, so everyone's clear about it, because on the application, everyone's allowed to check off that you either wanna take the program in person or remotely. Um, and right now, applications are trending towards students who wanna take it in person. About two thirds thus far have indicated they wanna take it in person. We're in person now, so a lot of students have said, well, why wouldn't we continue in person in the summer? That's a good question, but that decision has to be made by our senior administration at BC. The same type of decision has to be made by university housing. University housing is not within the Carroll School of Management's jurisdiction. They make their own decisions about reunion housing for alumni and summer housing and orientation leaders and Catalyst. Um, hopefully we'll be able to offer both an in-person program in Fulton on campus and with university housing. It might be that we're allowed to have classes but not have housing. But again, we'll announce all of this. But for those of you that did live on campus, uh, could you speak to what it was like to be on campus in summer housing? I mean, Colleen, do you wanna take that? Um, yeah, I thought it was a good experience. Um, so when I took it as a rising sophomore, um, I had a roommate who was also in Catalyst, so I thought that was a great experience. Um, they try to pair you with Catalyst roommates or at least put you on like similar floors. Um, so that was a really good experience to like um, be able to walk to class together, maybe like do homework together. Um, people also spend time in like the lounges together. And like when I was a TA, um, the next summer, like I spent a lot of time in the lounge, like working on homework with people um, because we like all lived in the same building. We all lived in 2K. Um, so I think it was just a great experience because people got to like cook dinner together and just spend time together, just like in the lounge doing homework or just like around each other doing whatever they wanted to because it was like a further extension of the classroom, but it just like helped to build the community even more, I would say. So I would recommend it if it's an option. Great. And did, did anyone sublease an apartment? So we have to try and plan for the possibility that we're in person. Again, we're offering a remote section as well. 
but um, assume we're in person for you know two thirds of the cohort that come come on board, and there's no housing. Um, students did sublease apartments from juniors that took out twelve month leases, right? And and off campus housing close to campus were widely available. Is is that fair to say? Any yes, of you? yes, that's fair. You want to um, speak to that, Chris? Sure. So I I was in two K. Um, and I, I loved it. My roommate for Catalyst is actually still my roommate now. Um, so that should say something. But no, we they, we had some close friends in the program that lived right on, I believe it was Gerald Street. Um, and it was a an identical commute. We actually met on Com Ave every morning to walk to campus together. And I know going into it, they had plenty of options um, for juniors that were looking to sub sublet for the summer. So um, if all else stays the same, that, that should be a pretty similar situation. Great. One of the, uh, I see one of the questions coming in about the, um, the uh, class years of the cohort. And so I'd say that the, most of the students, but it might only be, you know, 35%. So that's barely most, right, of, of the four years would be rising sophomores. And I think Talene answered that it would be rising sophomores and rising juniors. But we also have a lot of rising seniors that take it. And in the past two summers, we've had five or more graduates who took the program. They, they commenced and the next day they showed up in our program and they were starting jobs in August or September or they didn't have a job. And they just thought, well, now's a great time to learn, again, these essential uh, concepts in business that I can take into my first job. And so, it's a pretty um, diverse, class-wise, very diverse cohort. Um, any of you want to talk about going to school? Kylene, you took it when you were young, right? I mean, you were, what were you, 14 or something like that when you took it? <laughs> about being in class. Close, with close. What, was that, what was that like, Kylene? <laughs> about being in class, sorry, you cut being off. in class with seniors, you know? Oh, um, I mean, like, I thought it was fine. I think they, like in some aspects, they kind of take control in a leadership and like mentor kind of sense, um, like guiding people and like helping out with things that like the freshmen might not know, especially if you're there kind of by yourself over the summer for the first time, like the only thing you know is really like Upper and Newton. Um, so like they're there to help you out with stuff like that or like group projects, they kind of help with that, but there's no like, class rivalries, I would say. There's no like intimidation factor because like you're a freshman in class with seniors or a freshman in class with like recent graduates or anything like that. Um, so I'd say like the class lines are pretty blurred in that sense, but if anything, like they can be mentors to you, so. Great. The last thing I'll mention here on the slide is around program costs. Um, the, the stu students who um, seek financial aid, we, we asked that they apply um, uh, by a couple days ago, but there is financial aid available, yet financial aid is contingent upon a student already receiving aid from the university. Um, and so please reach out if you're one of those students. But again, those um, most of those apps are in. Um, let's see. Who should apply? Non-Carroll School, graduating seniors, welcome. And a prerequisite is one one course in math. If you've taken an AP or BC Calc or AB Calc or Stats, those suffice. Um, and again, applications evaluated on the courses taking your major. Many many of you are freshmen, um, and so maybe you only have one semester GPA. Um, maybe you're a sophomore and you were pre-med and you decided to change and freshman year didn't go that well. Uh, we, we really look at everything. Um, and then your resume and, and any extracurriculars. We know extracurriculars this year have been really tough. And so we're not going to hold that against anyone if you're not involved in so many different things. But we just like to know that you're, you're interested in engaging with others and you want to be a positive member of the cohort and that you really work to get along well with others because there are there are some group projects, right? Some, there is some group work and assignments, not too, too much, but a little bit. And then lastly, a brief, it's a brief essay. Um, you'll see that on the application. Um, applications close March 9th. Um, there's a $50 fee. And then admission decisions will be made 
um, on or around April 1st and will be sent out to people. Um, we again are in a bit of a holding pattern as far as being able to announce whether we're gonna be in person or uh, remote. If we are in person, um, three of those that are on right now took it and we had harbor cruises and we had barbecues and we had a ropes course, right? And we have field trips and pizza Fridays in Fulton. And we, we try and get you out and about on some field trips and we do some fun stuff. And again, we're hoping we can do that, but we make no assurances or representations at this point. Um, are there any good questions in the chat that someone has seen that we should answer that I have not been able to look at? Or any, any that you want to um, elaborate upon any of the answers? Um, one, one question just came in the chat asking about the breakdown of asynchronous versus synchronous for the online classes. Mm -hmm. Well, last year, virtually all of the classes were synchronous, um, right? So that the, the, the new, the most dreaded word in the last year, asynchronous versus synchronous, right? But they were synchronous. Our, our faculty like to teach kind of in real time. Although we did have an international student who was asleep when most of us were awake. Um, Kudzi, what time were you up for B-Law when we started at 9.30? You were up at 6.30 in the morning or something? Yeah, I was up at 7 a.m. bright and early every day. Mm. Wow, you were napping, I'm sure, in the afternoons, right? Yeah, for sure. Um, but, it, but and, and would you speak to the um, synchronous component and if that worked better for you? Yeah, kind of like I said earlier, I think I was definitely lucky that it wasn't something extreme like 5 a.m. or something, but that 7 a.m., like it made sure that I could still, you know, take advantage of, you know, that long summer day because it gets darker later. Um, and also just being able to take a, take advantage of like office hours more. Like I know I went to see Kylene a bunch of times for like accounting um, stuff because it was earlier in the day for me. So it was an advantage for me, but I could see how maybe it's a disadvantage for others depending on your time zone. Mm -hmm. And the way we have the schedule set at this point, if we're in person, we'll start that first class probably as we normally do around 9.30 or 9.45. But for the um, remote students, we'll start that around 10.30 or 10.35 Eastern time, um, recognizing that people are around America taking so uh, if you're admitted, um, deposits are due on May 1st. Here's a picture from a couple of years ago. Uh, Kylene, is this your class? No. No. Talene, are you, is, this, is this your class? Yeah, it is. I, I think Chris yeah, that, is that's class. us. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Ah, Chris, you're in here with Talene. We should zoom in on you and uh, embarrass you, right? All right. So there's a picture and we say, if you have any questions for us, please follow up. Are there any questions um, right now? Anybody? Um, I see a bunch in the chat. Um, let's see, someone's asking about the prerequisite classes and, and for further detail. So the only prerequisite is that you've taken math or an AP math in high school. Um, a lot of freshmen haven't had a chance to take their math core yet. So we don't want that to hurt you. And we know BC students to get into BC uh, had to have scored well on all components of the exams. So we haven't really had a problem in the past. So we're looking for, you know, math competence so that we know you can do the, do the work um, in accounting and in finance if that's what you take. But again, a, an AP class would show that you have that level of competence to take this introductory course. Are there any other questions? Um, if my, my team can help me, our alumni, anything else you see on there? Uh, there is a question about um, just a separate financial aid form, just apart from the general application. Mm -hmm. I don't see it. Um, so all you have to do if you applied and you seek aid is to click the box. And then we go ahead and we um, have the office inform us about need level. And then our admission committee will factor that in if you're, you're admitted. Um, in, in most cases, uh, the program will try and offer you aid commensurate with the need level so that you can attend the program. Access to this program is really, it's so important to our dean, to our dean, Andy Boynton. It's important to um, our associate dean, Ethan Sullivan, 
myself and Allie and the faculty in this program. We want students who uh, deserve a shot to be able to come. And that species uh, overall policy that we're need blind, um, but we do have an, in Catalyst, um, we do have a limited amount of scholarship that we can provide, but um, it doesn't hurt someone that they're um, requesting aid, not at all. And you won't be looked at differently than anyone else. Um, and again, we wanna be accessible. Is there anything else here? I think I see a question about the competitiveness. Um, this year is, is uh, the early indications with, with uh, three and a half weeks left to apply, um, almost a month left to apply. The, the applications are, are competitive, but you know everything in BC is competitive, right? Um, Appalachia services and programs are competitive. So it's competitive, but I think that because we're offering a remote section, which will be, we believe, a third class. We believe that we're going to have three sections. That's going to give some uh, elbow room uh, for us to grow the size of the class. Last year, we had 90 students um, over. We had two seven-week sessions last year. And the first session had two classes. The third had one. And uh, because of demand last year, we added that second one. And in doing so, we were able to accommodate all the students who were admitted. So great questions. And again, I think that uh, our time is, is, is uh, I'm over by eight minutes, what I hoped, but this is fine. Is there anything else? Um, maybe a closing comment for our from our ambassadors. Kudzi, I think you have a class you have to run to and. Yeah, I have to run to a class, but I was just gonna say, um, echo something uh, Professor Westner said, no, don't allow the price of the program to scare you. I was a student who was a recipient of some financial aid and, you know, I didn't feel different. I didn't feel, you know, anything. I was just a regular student who also participated in the program. And I applied knowing like, oh Lord, this is a lot of money. I don't know if this is doable, but I just did it anyway. And, you know, they found a way for me to be able to participate. So don't let the price of it scare you. Um, the second thing I was going to say is it looked like there were some questions about prerequisites for classes. So I know we're out of time, so maybe if you guys want to just check in with uh, Westner later. Um, but other than that, thank you so much for having me, Professor Westner. Um, I had him for Catalyst and one of my favorite professors ever now on campus. But um, I have to run to a class, but I really encourage you guys all to apply. It was an amazing experience. So, yes. Thanks, Kudz. We'll see you soon. Kyleen, Talene, you want to wrap up with anything, any closing comments for us? Um, I can just say something really quickly. So I know we talked about the, prof the professors, but for me, um, so I came in thinking that I wanted to be a finance minor. Um, I'm applied psychology, so I'm in Lynch and also double majoring in economics. So kind of have both strengths, but um, I thought I was wanted to be a finance minor, minor and went into it and ended up not liking finance and really enjoyed my marketing class. Um, and Professor Kerbs is absolutely wonderful. And I kept that connection um, and really keeping those connections like helped me during my um, fall or no spring semester of my junior year, Professor Kerbs helped me get an internship with a, um, a lecturer that came in and talked to us about his marketing um, profession and what he did at Google and how he opened his own marketing firm. So definitely, um, this is a program that I would say you should definitely utilize because um, you have all these strengths of being an ANS or Lancher um, in the Canal School. So you'll be like a great mix um, that employers want and they want students that that come with different backgrounds and definitely having the Carroll School of Management on your resume is a plus. Um, I've had um, different companies ask me why I have the Lynch School of Education and the Morrissey College of Arts and Sciences on my resume and also the Carroll School of Management. So it's kind of like a nice little um, hint or like trick that I have, but um, definitely if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, I'll put my email in the chat if anyone wants to talk to me too. So thank you so much. Great. Chris, any closing comments? Yeah, just to kind of echo what Tony said, I would say Catalyst is a program that it, it fosters every part of the student, right? So whether it's social, academic, or even career advice, it focuses on all three. And yes, it's, it's academically challenging. I think every, every alumni here would say that, alumnus, sorry. Um, but at, at the end of the day, you're going to benefit from it because 
you're there by choice and professors are there by choice. And I can honestly say it, it was a transformative summer for me. Um, I, I, not everyone, everyone has their own journey, but I, I really did make a 180 with my uh, career interests because of the program and the way that the professors and even other students and Kylene is the TA, um, they helped me every step of the way. So it's a bit of a jump. It might be a bit of a leap, um, but it, it's worth it. Great, thanks, Chris. Kylene? Um, I would also say like, if you're debating whether to do this program or just like leap into the minors, um, I think this program kind of just like offers you a better experience. Like I may be biased in that, um, but kind of what Talin was saying about like being able to differentiate your resume and say like Carroll School of Management, like Catalyst program on your resume, like interviewers have asked me about that every single time. And that's a great talking point, but also just like the added benefits you get from the program, like the extra classes that you get that you wouldn't get just from doing the minor. So for instance, if I just did my accounting minor, I would only have accounting, but through the Catalyst program, I get like a taste of eight other different classes and you wouldn't get that obviously if you just did the minor. Um, so I think like it just makes you like a more kind of well-rounded like business student um, if you do this program and it just helps you figure out what you do and don't want to do before you leap into the minor if like that's the path you wanna take. Um, so I would suggest like doing the program maybe before you decide or like instead, but I could be biased, but like, I think that's the way to go. Some really good points there, Colleen. And, and the other thing in terms of the value proposition, right, with 10 credits, students can have that money in the bank, so to speak. And, and those 10 credits can give you a little bit of a tailwind as you proceed on towards senior year and allow you to maybe do an internship during a regular semester without the pressure of having to take five classes. So I hope that this was helpful, everybody. Um, again, we welcome your, your interest and appreciate it and uh, welcome your uh, application. Callie, I see you're in there. Your brother took the program, right? Hi, Callie. You don't have to say anything, but good to see you. Good to see you. Sorry, my mute wasn't working, yeah. but yeah, my brother took it and he really liked it. No problem. Glad to see you in. And um, everyone else, thanks for joining. Uh, we hope it was helpful to my um, TAs, our ambassadors. Thank you very much. You're all model citizens and students. Kylene, you've been you've been at this now for three years with us. This might be your last info session. And Kylene's also the amazing manager of the women's basketball team. So she is a great uh, catalyst ambassador. And Talene, Chris, and Ali, are we good? Anything else from your point of view? I think we're good. I think you covered it all. All right, great. Well, we ran over a little bit, everybody. Um, if you gave us a thumbs up, that would make us feel like we covered important ground. Good, good. All right, we'll have some dinner and uh, hopefully we're getting through COVID soon. Things uh, seem to be turning if we look at the data and VC students are doing a great job managing it. Um, let's keep on track so we can stay in person for the rest of the semester. We don't wanna get sent home. So let's hang in there, everybody. Okay, have a great night. Thank you.